My name is Brock, and this is the Dungeon Master's Toolkit Podcast. On today's episode, we talk about one-shots. This episode is going to be a little bit different. Instead of it being an interview, it will be more of a deep dive on the topic. So what one-shots are, when you should play them, tips for running them, that sort of a thing. We also answer some questions from the server. And if you like this type of episode, please let me know either on the episode or in the Discord server. If people enjoy this format, then we might do more episodes like this interspersed between regular episodes on various topics. Before we jump into the episode, I just want to thank all of my listeners and give you a few ways that you can help support the podcast. The first way is just by listening to the episode, so congratulations, you're already helping me out. You can also interact with the podcast in any way, like, share, all of the usual things that also greatly helps me out, and it's super easy to do. The next way you can help is by interacting with the community, hanging out in the Discord server, playing or running games on the server, or joining in our design contests that we run. The third way you can help is by being interviewed or letting somebody else know that they should get on the show. All you got to do is contact me via Discord or Twitter or wherever, and we'll get some time scheduled to get you in on an episode. If you're still looking for ways to support the show, you can always use one of the affiliate links in the show notes for any of the RPGs or books that are mentioned. They link to either Amazon or DriveThruRPG, and if you make a sale for anything on one of those sites after using a link, then I get a small percentage of the sales. That's a great way to support the show while also getting something for yourself. And finally, the last way is you can support me on Patreon or buy me a coffee. I will have links in the show notes on where to go for that. And that's just a simple monthly donation to help fund future design competitions and equipment purchases and stuff like that. Thank you again to all of my listeners. I feel like we've been growing a really awesome community here around tabletop role-playing games. And with that, let's jump into the episode. Welcome, everybody. Today, it is me and my wife, Ashley. Hey, everyone. And today, we are going to be talking about one-shots. Yeah, so one-shots, by definition, are um, just role-playing games designed to be played and completed in a single section. But from what I've seen, it says you'll experience an entire adventure in a span of three to five hours or less. I feel like it's so vague and it can be so many different things. Yeah, I would agree with that. And sometimes you don't uh, always witness an entire adventure. You maybe witness a very small portion of an adventure in a single one shot. I feel like a lot of that depends on what your reasoning is for why you're having a one shot. So I guess let's jump into the reasons for why we would play a one shot. Ashley, do you want to give us our first reason? Sure. Um, I feel like a good um, time to have a one shot is when you have all new players and you're just trying to get them excited about RPGs in, in general. I agree. I think that one-shots are a really good way to kick off learning for new players and really let them jump into the game right away without some of the maybe uh, character creation things or some of that other stuff that can kind of bog new players down. Uh, Because really, you just want to get them to the table as fast as possible and get them hooked, and then they can come back and do all that extra legwork after the fact. A lot of what what your reason is for having a one shot, I think helps define what you're going to do to set it up. If you're doing completely new players, you might have character sheets already done for them and allow them to just pick from that. Or if you're just giving DMs a chance to have a break from DMing for a little bit, maybe they want to do all that character creation and just really dive into that. I think that actually leads into one of our questions really well that was submitted by Thane, uh, and he said, is character creation uh, and kind of the explanation rules uh, of the rules part of the session itself, or do you do that uh, beforehand? And I think, uh, like you mentioned, in this case, it kind of depends. Uh, Character creation for new players, uh, maybe you have pre-generated characters already and you just let them pick, 
Um, maybe if they're experienced, you let them build their characters at a time. And then kind of same thing with explanation of the rules. If they're new players, you probably probably at the beginning of the session is kind of a good time to talk about some of the rules. Um, though I would lean into kind of explaining rules as you get to them. So explain just enough for them to get started and then explain the rest of the rules kind of as they come up in play. I know as a player, I prefer to have things explained as they come. If I get too overwhelmed with rule after rule, I, I just get bored and I'm not excited to play anymore. So if I have just enough information to get me to the next spot, that usually is best for me. And obviously, if you're playing with experienced uh, players or DMs or whatever, you're not going to probably run into rules as much as you would with a newer group. Right. Do you have other um, times for when a one shot is good? One shots are also really good when maybe one of your players or a couple of your players, maybe in a regularly scheduled campaign, um, aren't able to make it for the night. So maybe there's a last minute cancellation and like four of your six people are around. If somebody that's there has a one shot that's prepped or something that they can do quick, sometimes that can be a good just, we're still meeting, we're still going to play, but we're not going to you know, take a look at the main storyline. We're going to look at something maybe somewhere else, or maybe it's a completely different system, uh, just to kind of keep your time slot available, but also still get to play, even though not everybody is there that week. I think that's a really great time to play too. So you don't have the letdown of everyone gets excited. And then if there's a last minute cancellation of a player, then you just all don't play. Obviously it's totally understandable if the the DM can't make it or no one has a one shot prepared. But if you do, it's just a really fun time to to do that. Assuming you can create characters or have them created and play out the one shot within the, the allotted amount of time. I think having a handful of one shots kind of in your back pocket as a DM is a good uh, strategy to have um, for that reason. Uh, in case uh, things come up. Um, the One of the one-shots that I ran a while back on the server kind of was that same situation. There was a, a scheduled game and somebody couldn't make it. So we were like, oh, well, hey, I got a one-shot we can run. We'll just fit that in quick. And so then everybody that could make it was able to do that. We also had another uh, instance a little bit later where um, we had a cancellation and after the fact, we're like, oh shoot, you know, if we would have had something planned, we could have, you know, still had everybody else meet and at least had some fun and, and played a one shot, but, uh, nobody had anything prepped. So we had to skip that one, but yeah, I think that especially if you have a one shot planned, but you don't have it so strict, you could potentially do so within the, the world as just like an offshoot. Or as like building lore if you do different characters, or else you can just do something totally different just for fun. One uh, to to your point of keeping it kind of in the current world. Um, perhaps there was some major event that happened in your setting uh, that you're playing, and if you have maybe just a few details about it, you could actually run a one shot that you know, with different characters from the regular campaign, but that deals with whatever that, you know, major event was. Maybe it was like a siege of a castle or something. And you maybe only know a couple of details about it. And, you know, maybe there's a ruined castle or something that the players are going through. Um, and you just kind of work those things in to say, okay, well, here's the castle. Let's play out this battle that happened. And maybe we'll actually learn more about what happened during that battle than just kind of the, you know, notes that you had written down about that event before. Right. I think that knowing why you're doing your one shot or what the purpose of the one shot is helps define and create a, a better game. Is it you're trying a new system? Is it that your character or your um, players are completely new to RPGs in general? Are you just trying to have a fun night and playing, you know, and you don't want to commit to a long-term campaign. And then from there, you know how intricate or what level you should start them at. 
and and those sorts of things. You bring up a good point about trying new systems, and that's actually one of the main things that we've done on the server with our one shots is they've been a chance for DMs to play in a system that they maybe don't have experience in, but would like to see how it works. Uh, we had a Blades in the Dark game and a Dungeon World game. Um, and then in both of those, everybody that was playing really hadn't or had minor exposure to the systems and actually getting to play them. So the one shots in that sense were a great way for one DM to show the rest of the DMs kind of how the system works, how it runs, and then to give them ideas of, okay, maybe I would like to run this at my table or maybe not, or maybe there are things I'd like to steal from the system. Do you have anything else you'd want to say on using one shots to try new systems? I think that when you're doing it to try a new system, you want to focus on trying to have a variation of encounters, whether it be social or combat oriented and give them opportunities to kind of get a feel for everything versus if you're trying to give people a break, maybe you just want to go super combat heavy and just, you know, try to do a total party kill just for the fun of it. (laughs) That's a good point. If you're trying to learn a system, you probably want to see a little bit of everything and that may or may not include character creation and it could even involve like leveling up or, you know, whatever, whatever however that system handles, you know, advancement. Um, being able to see how that works, maybe like mid game or something. So you get to kind of have a taste of leveling up and then also, you know, continuing to play either because, you know, leveling up at the end of a one shot really doesn't mean much. I do think it's a great way to find out if you're going to enjoy playing that race or background or whatever it may be for a long-term campaign as well. If you don't get a little feel for it, or if the, the DM isn't willing to let you switch in between, it's really hard to go all in on something that you just don't know how you feel about it. So we had a couple other questions that were asked. So one of the questions that was asked was, how frequently do one shots take a single session to complete? Um, And then kind of in conjunction with that, do you find it difficult to judge how long a one shot will actually run? And I, so I've been planning, there was one shot that I've been kind of working on that I thought was a one shot. And after playing in a couple more one shots, I realized that it's actually like three or four sessions worth of content. Um, so going to the Dungeon World example, uh, that we ran a few months ago, that was just, I grabbed a map online, I threw some enemies in it, and basically said, okay, players, you gotta go just, like, hunt down all the enemies in this little, uh, it was like a Duke's, like, manor or something. And surprisingly, I, I didn't think it was gonna take, you know, like, three hours, but after we talked, you know, kind of finalized characters... We probably got started about 45 minutes into the the session and then it took them or took you guys the rest of the like three hours to actually kind of finish off everybody in there. So it was something that I thought was going to be a little bit faster. Um, One shots, I do think, tend to last longer than you think just because, well, I guess that depends on how many players there are. If there's really more than two players, I would assume it's going to take longer than you think because you don't leave room for conversation and trying to figure out what you're going to do. A lot of times when there's two players or so, then they kind of just, in my experience, they just kind of go go through what you planned because they don't have as many opinions. You know, to bounce <laughs> yeah, between. Yeah, I, when we were running the Dungeon World one shot, there was a lot of conversation about like kind of between rounds where it was like okay we're all here we've kind of set up defensive a defensive line here okay who's gonna go draw them out well i you know i can i can go do this thing and and so and so can go do this other thing and then we spent like 10 or 15 minutes just like deciding what everybody was gonna do and then that's not even accounting for actually doing it and getting the roles and getting the responses of what the enemies are doing I do think when deciding on how long 
Um, or the question was, do you find it difficult to judge how long a one shot will actually run? I think the problem lies with trying to see how long you think this encounter will last versus yeah. going off of how long do you think the players will talk? It really <laughs> depends on who your players are. You can have the exact same one shot and it can be one hour with one group and you can still not have a resolve to the one shot after six hours with others. <laughs> well, in one of the other one shots that we played in too, there was a, there was a combat that went a little bit long. And I think that was more so because us as players were kind of uh, stringing the combat out where the, some of the enemies were kind of like trying to get away and we just, just kind of kept going after them, uh, which, you know, bogged it down a little bit uh, to not really to anybody's fault. It just took longer than the DM expected because we were kind of acting contradictory to maybe what he had planned. I um, do think that if you have, you know, when judging how long it's going to take, you do need to go back to that beginning of who or what are you running this for? If you are running it for new new players, especially new to RPGs in general, it it does kind of depend on how inquisitive they are, like how how much they really want to know. But a lot of times they, for their first time, will go exactly w what is laid out in front of them. Versus if you are playing with a bunch of DMs who just need a break or really seasoned players, you're going to get a lot more of that conversation and, and more of that flavor added in that does take up more time, but it does sure make it a lot of fun. I think also if you, like you said, it kind of depends on what you want to do. If you really need to make sure that you uh, wrap up on time and you want to make sure that you finish kind of the story that you have planned for the one shot, then communicating those pieces to your players at certain points might be good. It's, it's not always fun to be like, okay, guys, we got to wrap this, this combat up because we got to get to the rest of it. But, you know, if that is part of what, you know, you have planned for the night and you want them to, you really want them to see those pieces, then I don't think that there's any harm in, in just kind of being, up front about it to say, hey, we, we need to kind of hurry through this piece. Um, or, you know, kind of doing the DM hand wave thing, right? Where like, okay, I know, like, I know that the players are going to try and like chase my bad guys, but I'm just going to say that they managed to get away and, and run. And I'm not going to let them roll. I'm not going to let anybody do anything else. I'm just going to like kind of cut the scene here so we can get on to like the next the next piece of it. And I think as a DM, you just got to kind of watch for those areas. So it's probably more of a learned skill than anything. It's not always easy to know when, when you should do that. Looks like we have another question here. What is the shortest a one shot can be and still be a complete experience? I guess it depends on what you want to consider as a complete experience, right? Because just making characters if you want to go that route you know it can take you i'd probably plan at least a half an hour to an hour of your session i mean even for like dungeon world dungeon world it takes like 10 minutes to put a character together but by the time we you know talk to each of the players and make sure they're happy with everything i mean it can it can take a while to get stuff all settled in um i think it depends also on what you decide to go with are you going to give them completed characters because if you do that especially if you can give them the completed character sheets ahead of time or if they make their characters ahead of time so that way you don't have to to do that and they're familiarized with it that can make you go a lot faster as well and how much explanation are you going to need to give i'd say i mean are we going with actual amount of time like three hours is a pretty three hours is pretty solid a pretty solid one shot like if you really wanted to cram everything into like an hour you might you you probably could do it if you had pre-generated characters or character creation was done ahead of time and you had experienced players probably in the system and you had a very targeted story or you know, set of encounters that you wanted to tell and you kind of told your players, you know, these are the main things that are going to happen or the main like 
I've got like three, three things that we need to hit and I want to be done in an hour. I think you probably could get in and do like 20 minutes. You say, say you had three encounters that you wanted them to do. You could get in, just say, I, we want to do each encounter in about 20 minutes and it will be done in an hour. I think you could, you could probably pull that off, but it would be a lot more intensive planning and dedication on both the DM's part and the player's part to pull something like that off. Yeah, I think I would, I personally wouldn't want to play in that fast a one just because it doesn't leave room for, for much of anything as far as um, conversation jump off points or um, much combat. If there's a whole lot of rolling, it just doesn't leave. Slows it down a lot. Yeah, it just doesn't leave a lot of time for rolling and stuff, but you definitely could, especially if you, like you said, have more experienced players that know what to look for and can almost start, you know, thinking ahead of time. And that's almost, you know, what's the shortest a one shot can be and still be a complete experience. I, if you had all of those things, I think you could do it. That doesn't mean that that's the best way or even necessarily a fun way to play one shots. I just think it's, it's possible, but yeah, I would probably, if you're going to go for kind of the average, I would say at least two hours Probably about three to four hours is probably a good amount of time for a single session. Right. I feel like a one shot in that three to five hour range is probably best. If you do much shorter than that, it doesn't leave enough time to really draw out and have, um, like I said in this question, a complete experience. It would be more like just a little chunk of an experience. But if you go much longer than that, like you're really going to be either kind of jumping, like reaching pretty far or just really drawing it out if it's past five hours. Yeah, it depends on how much you have planned too because that one shot that I was talking about writing, you could probably get that done in like a six hour session would probably be plenty. Uh, But trying to cram it all into like three hours would just be way, to just be way too much. It'd just take too long. So I think it kind of depends on what you have planned for the one shot. Um, and I think, honestly, for me, I think that I am always somewhat surprised at like how little we tend to get done when we either play or run a tabletop game in the course of like three to four hours. Because like three to four hours is a good chunk of time to do anything like in your day, right? right. It's like half a day of work. Um and it always, I think I'm always a little bit surprised by like, okay, we did, a, we did this thing, we did this thing, and then we only got to here. I was like, what have we been doing for the last four hours? You know, <laughs> like it just goes by so quickly. But it's like you said, it's a lot of that. There's conversation and there's a lot of deliberation and stuff kind of between things. That's not, it's part of playing a role playing game, but it's not like the actual game either, right? It's not the roles. It's not the like acting out stuff it's just kind of that in-between fluff of hanging out with your friends essentially Uh, and that always just takes up more time than you think it will to jump back to the how frequently do one shots take a single session to complete i do think that also really depends on how hard of a stop time do you have is it a three hour it has to be done in in three hours or is it you know we're we're here for this one shot for you know, however long it takes. And a lot of that is on the DM to kind of speed or slow down, speed up or slow down the conversation. Keeping keeping the pacing and stuff and, and hurrying your players along if they're just kind of mulling about not doing anything productive to the story. Yeah. Um, and I agree with the stop time, especially um, as adults with jobs and, and a kid. Um and knowing that a lot of the other people that we play with are in similar boats, it's a lot of the one shots and stuff that we've played in have kind of been more um, having a, a specific stop time, not necessarily because we have other things going on, but just to respect everybody's time and and also because it tends to be late when we play. So, you know, as fun as it would be to play till two in the morning on a work night, uh, the following day is a lot less fun. <laughs> Uh, after doing that so just keeping things kind of good for everybody is has been a has been nice i feel like if you need to speed them up just roll like a 
a counter dice or something, count down to something. You don't even need to know what it is. They're going to speed up because they're like, I don't know what's coming, but something's coming in two rounds. We got to, we got to hurry up. <laughs> um, I think that is actually one of the tips that uh, Hankerin gives with ICRPG is the, the timer dice and just um, speeding people along by, by throwing, not letting people have an infinite amount of time to solve whatever problem that they're dealing with. Right. Because if you have, Unlimited amount of time, most tasks become somewhat trivial or, you know, you can just kind of brute force it after so long. But if you have, you know, a bomb is going to explode, you don't have 20 minutes to uh, to deal with the situation. You've got two minutes, you know, so now you just scramble as hard as you can to do whatever it is you need to do before that two minutes is up. Or for instance, in the Dungeon World one shot that you ran recently... We were all outside kind of figuring out what we were going to do before we went in. And if you needed to speed it along, just you can just add as you guys are talking, you know, they're or as you guys are planning on what you're going to do, they heard you guys or something, you know, and, and make the somebody comes to check or something. Right. Throw a wrench in your plans. Right, exactly. Isn't that what GMing is? Throwing a wrench. Yeah, and I think plans. in Dungeon World, there's a, a DM. I don't know if it's a move or it's kind of like a philosophy. Is like when you're when the players give you a golden opportunity to do something, you know, make something happen, and that that is kind of one of those golden opportunities, right? Where they're kind of busy. I wouldn't do it all the time, but if they're taking a little bit longer than normal, maybe get, throw them some in-game consequences because they're they're being slow. All right. The next question is, is character creation slash explanation of rules part of the session? So we kind of talked about that at the beginning. Um, I think it kind of, it really depends on who you're playing with. If you're playing with new characters, or not, not new characters, if you're playing with new players, I always would suggest to have pre-built character sheets unless your system is just super fast at making characters. Um, but I would I would almost err on the side of having pre-gens available and then maybe just giving a, a quick rundown of like what is on the character sheet and what a lot of it means because most sheets have some type of stat numbers and, and things like that. Or like in Dungeon World, you have a list of moves that your character can make and knowing like what triggers those and just kind of briefly, um, I think is important. Uh, having veteran players really rules probably isn't a big deal because they should know them. Right. It would be more so if you if you're more strict on a rule or you have some you know house rules or whatever, then you would want to state right. those. Yep. With character creation, I feel like part of that depends on your amount of time and the overall session, like the goal of the session. If you're trying to get everything done within a certain amount of time, then you need to weigh how long you need. Do you have time for character creation? If not, then that would be something you want to tell them to do ahead of time. If it's the instance of, well, someone can't be here tonight, then obviously you're going to need to do character creation at the beginning because you don't just have a random character lying around. Right, you might not have a lot. It depends. Some some D and D players have you know hundreds of characters ready to go. But you're, but typically, I am, <laughs> I am not that. Though <laughs> player. typically that's more in concept, and they don't have a character sheet filled out. And filling out a D and D character sheet can take a while, even if you're. Uh, a veteran player it's just there's a lot of tedious work there to get all your stats and your race and stuff all entered in well and it depends on how much you want to develop your backstory and stuff like that it really varies from person to person there is a good question what kind of backstory stuff should you have for a one shot i think it really depends on the dm but having having too long of a backstory isn't really beneficial because we only have a certain amount of time Having just enough to to use them as knives or things to steer the overall session can be good. Personally, I would say for a one shot, you probably really don't need backstory, aside from maybe like one little thing to say they were a carpenter or they you know had some experience because really 
uh, like you mentioned knives we filled those out for one of the campaigns that we're in uh, just a bunch of like little things about your character that the dm can use uh, to help kind of entangle your character in the plot uh things that they can use but in you know in the sense of a one shot uh, a lot of that stuff isn't probably super important um, unless you wanted to do like a Mad Libs thing where everybody's got like a, a handful of things and then you have like this Mad Lib adventure that's like player one's pet, you know, and th- blah, 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 blah. And then player two's, you know, relative and then get in a fight and <laughs> maybe I, we'll have to make those up with little Mad Libs where you fill out a handful of little things <laughs> about your character and then the DM just takes it and puts it into a Mad Lib. I do think part of it depends on the order of, you know, are you doing characters outside of the session? Are you, you know, are you creating the character beforehand? Is there something such as more so, I guess, along the lines of their um, background or alignment? Like, are they a really shady character? Were they wronged or something? Like, why, why would they do what they're doing? But not super small things in your background that you would maybe want to have for a long-term campaign. And I think when we did the dungeon world one shot, we did ask a couple of questions. Like I went around the table and asked a handful of things about kind of just to get to know the character a little bit better. Uh, But none of it was super, super in depth, except I will give um, Joe's example because Joe made a character that was an immolator he was a salamander, like lizard folk type character uh, that could basically conjure like fire swords, right? Um, and the one thing that he wanted to do with the character was to have him be like the pet that the party would have found on like previous adventures, right? Like all all adventuring parties for whatever reason want to adopt like a goblin or, you know, some type of small, you know, a kobold or something and have them along for the ride and that that's what joe wanted uh this character sal to be so his background was that the party found him uh and just adopted him and he calls everybody dad (laughs) Uh, and it was it was a ton of fun to have him just be calling everybody dad and wandering around with the party uh just like this little pet that they had found that was the probably the most in-depth backstory that we had from that one shot yeah i do think especially for a one shot People do vary so much on what they like to do for backstories and how in-depth they like to go. So generally probably err on the side of not as much of a backstory for that because you may be planning way more than the DM is. (laughs) Well, and especially for a one shot. Right. uh, It's just specifically. There's just not there's not a lot of time even for the DM to get through the session itself, let alone try to weave in you know, other narrative bits. Although I I do really like that Mad Libs idea. Um, (laughs) We'll have to make one of those and see, you know, how that goes. um, Let's talk a little bit about planning one shots um, and how you would kind of go about that. Planning a one shot for me, um, really the easiest way to do it is to find a map online that you're interested in. Um, or some type of a concept. So with the Dungeon World one-shot, the main goal was to just expose um, the players to the system because most of them had not, I think with the exception of you, had not played Dungeon World. And so I just found a map online that was free and found some enemies, and I just threw them in there and basically said, all right, good luck. You guys got to go. You got to go clear them out, clear out all the bad guys, right? And the one of the other one shots I did was a Star Wars one shot, which was very similar. Uh, found a map online of like an asteroid base, populated it with a bunch of stormtroopers and stuff, and then had a scientist in there and basically told the party, uh, "You guys got to go rescue him. He's an Imperial defector. Uh, he's got information on a weapons project. I don't care how you go in or go out." And I just set a couple of like, you know. There was a couple of requirements for that one. Like they couldn't just fly up to the asteroid base because their uh, ship would get shot down by the system defenses. So if they'd have to uh, find another way to get in. And then once they were ready to leave, they'd either have to disable the defenses or in some way 
uh, if they wanted to fly out. Otherwise, they'd have to find a different way out. So they had a couple of like hard requirements, and then everything else was a sandbox to them. We just drop them in and let them let them figure it out. I do think that when doing a one shot, when planning for one, one of the best things you can do is just answering who, what, when, where, why. Who are you planning it for? Why are you planning it? What's the overall intentions? And then um, the amount of time that you have. And from there, are you wanting to have them do a certain combat? Are they trying to recover something? And then go from there. I don't always like to plan off of a map just because I like to kind of see where it goes and um, with me and the players describe where they're at. But I do think that if you're trying to have a specific shorter amount of time with a one shot, having a map can be beneficial to just not, you know, leave anything uh, up for debate or not, not having any questions about where you're at. But... Yeah, I think sometimes for me, I can get a little bit too attached to maps and feeling like I need a map for everything, which isn't always great. Though, like you said, sometimes I can keep things a little bit more focused too, right? Because it doesn't give them, the players, 100% freedom to just go somewhere else that I didn't have planned. It kind of keeps them a little bit confined to like, well, this is where we're at and this is what's planned. So please stay here. (laughs) (laughs) On the other side of things, though, sometimes you can players can look at a map and they're like, well, it looks like there's a window there. Can I do this thing that you totally weren't planning on me doing and, and totally mess it up too. Versus if you are just making it up, you can just say, no, nope, because there's a bookshelf right there. Or, you know, uh, that actually happened in the star Wars one shot where there was like a vent drawn on one in one of the hallways. And they're like, can we climb through this vent? And it was like, uh, sure, let me just draw where the vent goes quick. Uh, you guys <laughs> yeah, are in the, you guys yes, are in the why zero. not? Good question. Uh, roll to see if you make a ton of noise while you're in there. <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes maps can be good for that and bad for that because uh, sometimes, like you said, there are things in there that you maybe you didn't even recognize what they were the first time. I think in the Dungeon World one, there was like something on the ground and it was like a fallen over bookshelf, but I didn't realize that that's what it was until one of the players mentioned it. It was like, oh, yeah. That's the thing. It's right there. (laughs) How about running a one shot? Do we have any tips? We've kind of been talking about in general running a one shot. Do we have any specific tips for running one shots? I think the biggest thing would be being conscious of time and pacing. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to agree. Those are going to be your biggest. uh, Those are your two biggest things that are going to impact this session. The other piece would be making sure that you give the players you know, as much information about what's happening as you can up front so that they just know what's going on. Because if you're coming into it fresh without having ever heard any of the setup to their, any you know storylines or anything, right? Like you really got to get the point across pretty quick just so think, that people know what's going on. Yeah, unlike a long-term campaign where really if you have that first session – very super vaguely planned out you can really plan the rest of the campaign around that first session and you can't do that quite as much with this so having as much information available um at the beginning is the way to go that's where i think like little missions or quests or something or like heists work really well because you can kind of say here's this like targeted activity that we're going to do that takes place in this one location you know, you can kind of zoom in on it and then you can give them stipulations on like, here are the things that you need to accomplish in order to be successful. And here's a couple things that you might encounter that might be in your way. Now you figure out how to get in and get out and do the thing. So missions, heists, um, I mean, even like a small dungeon or something would be kind of good for that as well, right? Where you just have a kind of a very specific activity that they're going to do. Um, they basically have to have a, a main goal or a couple main goals or like they're going to fight this big bad or something. Right. And then just just make it really targeted versus, you know, playing in a campaign. You might have certain sections of the campaign or certain sessions during the campaign where you're like, oh, well, we're going to this town. We just got here. All right. OK, I'm going to go check out the blacksmith and so and so wants to check out the magic item shop and, you know, all that. and then. 
it, it can still be a lot of fun. It's just also like not, di- it's not like directed. It's just kind of like a free roam session more so or a free flowing session. Uh, whereas like with one shots, you really want to be pretty intentional with what is actually happening. What content are you going through? I do think that having characters created beforehand can be really beneficial for that um, to keep up the pacing and timing just because there can be questions or people wanting to know like, is this okay in your campaign or in your um, session that, you know, you can get some of those questions out of the way so they don't take up as much of the time and you can really just focus on what you're trying to do. A couple of other uh, things that I just thought of that one shots can be good for. They can be good for trying out different uh, classes or just kind of like setups in the game. Like maybe there's a certain class that you haven't gotten to play and you want to try it out before you, like you said, dedicate an entire campaign to playing that type of a character. Um, so you could jump in and play as like a druid for a couple or for like a one shot and then be like, ah, I hate it. I don't want to play this, you know, and then it's fine. Right. Um, or even just playing at like really high levels of play because a lot of campaigns in, you know, D and D terms only go from like levels three to like 10, maybe 15, but a lot of times they don't get up past, you know, level 15. So throw a level 21 shot in and just try playing with characters that are that powerful um, but then also knowing that you don't have to try to like balance encounters for 20th level parties for an entire campaign or for a long time. Right. Back on your, um, on what you were saying before with playing with different classes and things like that, there are some that I would really like to play as just to see what they're like, but I pretty much always end up just being a rogue. I just, I always do. So it's nice to try out other things and not having to commit to them long term if I don't like it. Yeah, because I think in the Dungeon World one shot, you were a fighter, right? I am actually a fighter in a long term campaign right now, which is different for me. Um, but I have I have tried that and I have done a um, druid as well in a one shot. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes it's nice to try out and see if you enjoy playing spells or you enjoy being more of a melee character versus a range character and just getting to try those things out that's definitely one of the benefits of playing a character before you create a character like for new players because um, one of the things also with that is you tend to see there are things usually on paper that you're like oh if I put a bunch of my points into this, I'll be really good at this thing. And then you might play a session and that role never comes up. Like maybe you put a bunch of points into <laughs> like animal handling that or is something. so frustrating. And, and you're then, like, there are no animals here. <laughs> right. And then, and then if you're your DM or the kind of like theme of the campaign doesn't lend itself to ever to those things ever coming up, then like, it's really, it's really frustrating to have a ton of points into something and then never get to use it. So then build, you know, knowing that, okay, I thought this is how the mechanics were going to work on paper, but now that I've played it and these checks don't come up very often, I think I would rather have something else and then being able to swap. That is something that is really beneficial in a one shot. Um, I know that you don't want to give away the campaign, but giving them a little, you don't really need animal handling or whatever for the, for this campaign or this type of thing isn't going to come up very much that's nice to know since it's you know with a long-term campaign just about anything can come up but it is nice to know ahead of time if you really should refocus your points when you're doing a um one shot right and i guess for me like my very first DD character was a monk and the whole idea of like a dodge tank to me was really cool where like I, I don't have to wear like really heavy armor to be super tanky. I can just dodge everything because, you know, I'm a monk. And then as it turns out, um, as soon as you miss a dodge, then then you're in big trouble <laughs> as a monk because you don't have a ton of health. So so like I had this character concept for what I wanted to do, but the mechanics really didn't support 
or or really work the way I thought that they were going to work when I built the character. So then it was kind of a disappointment playing it long, you know, long term because it wasn't pulling off what I thought it was going to do. It looked like it was going to be like that on paper, but it just, it just wasn't. Especially Um, in a long-term campaign, you want to have that synergy with your players, you know, with, with their characters. And if you're really dodgy, you better have someone that can (laughs) do damage where, you know, when you're doing a one shot, pretty much everyone knows that you're going to be trying to kill something so you're not gonna have a ton of healers for a one shot it doesn't really matter it's less important um one shots can also be a good spot to test out like um homebrew rules uh, or like custom mechanics or custom content or classes to you know if there's something that you're maybe one of your players is like i found this custom class that i would like to use in our campaign and you're just not sure if that's gonna just break the game or not you could just be like, here, play it in this one shot, and then we'll see. And if it feels relatively normal like the other classes, then, you know, maybe we'll let you play it long term. But if it just is just like stupid broken, then maybe we'll say no to that one. One thing that we have put a lot of focus on is if you have new players or your players are new to the system. But doing a one shot is also a great opportunity for a new DM, whether you're new to the system or new in general then you're not taking this giant leap into trying to DM for a whole campaign and then finding out like, oh crap, I don't really like this. And now I have that, you know, so many people that are counting on me versus, hey, let's throw together a one shot and and give it a shot and see if it's something that you actually enjoy doing. I think it's also takes a little bit of stress off of a new DM as well, because you don't have to have Uh, like an entire world built you don't have to put in a bunch of time trying to figure out what your homebrew world is going to be like or what the like storyline arc is going to be all you have to do is plan one session right and i guess kind of ideally and kind of the way that i think about campaigns is they're really just a string of one shots so if you do a one shot and you do a really good job and the players want to keep coming back well then you can just have you know, a second session using the same characters. And if you do that enough times, you just kind of have a campaign, right? But it just kind of gives you, like running a one-shot just gives you permission to be like, we're going to run this one thing. And if it's terrible, then we can play something else next time, you know, and you don't have to worry about it. It's a really non-committal way to just kind of like dip your toes into the water. Like, is this something that I enjoy doing as a DM? Is this something that the players enjoy? And then you can kind of go from there. So If you can find a group of people, whether it's on the server or somewhere else, you can find people that are willing to play with you. It's a it's a good time to just give it a shot. Really, you don't have to have a ton of planning. Yes, if you're going to try and plan it within a certain amount of time and you want to get a bunch of stuff done, you might want to just lower your expectations and only have only be strict on a couple of things, whether it's time you know then focus on that or if you really want them to complete this goal you have no idea how long it'll take you know maybe have the time limit be more open-ended that kind of thing and then as you get better at dming then for a one shot you can kind of add more like constraints uh you mentioned players uh and that's also a, a good thing that one shots are for is if you don't have people nearby like you don't have a friend group that already plays role-playing games running a one-shot or playing in a one-shot can be a good way to kind of find other people that have similar tastes to you and that you might be able to play in a long-term campaign with um because it is kind of scary to play with new people that you've never met online for the first time because you don't know like are they going to be mean or not or in, in my experience most everybody's been pretty nice but um it's definitely a way to see if you enjoy playing with certain people um, or, or maybe not. And then that can be a way to be like, okay, I found like three or four people that I really liked playing one shots with. I'm going to see if I can set up a long-term campaign with them just because they are such a blast to play with. Um, I know a lot of the people that we've played with on the server have just been a ton of fun to play with. Um, and I'd love to play long-term campaigns with basically everybody. Um, <laughs> but just a, a good way to test the waters again. Like you said, it's non-committal. 
you can play one shot and if you're just like oh this person was terrible i hated playing with them well then you don't have to play with them anymore right you just you just have the one shot and then you're done yeah that is really nice and I am sure that being able to play online has been around for a long time. It is new to me. Um, we've been doing some sessions on Roll20 and Shard. And, and Foundry. And Foundry. <laughs> and it has been really um, nice to get to, to know how to do that too before we you know, only did it in person. And it does really open up a whole new world of of playing and um, being able to do more one shots or long term campaigns. Yeah, even just getting to know online tools and if you like if you like using tool certain tools or not. You can say, hey, we're going to use Shard this time instead of Roll Twenty. And then um, I really like Shard as a player. I like it a lot less as a DM from a DM standpoint. But this is, those are things that you kind of learn. That's another you thing that you them. can you can test out on a one shot is do you like using that? Do you like, you know, before you get into a long term campaign and have a bunch of stuff put in on shard and then you realize you want to do roll 20 or whatever, you know, that's really beneficial as well. Yeah, especially because most of those tools you have to import a lot of data on your own because or you have to buy it through their, you know, their platform or whatever. So, you know. Yeah, before you spend a ton of time adding all of the player options and then and then you play one game and you're like, oh, this is terrible. I hate this. <laughs> right. You don't want to then be like, okay, now I have to try and switch everything over. And we are a session or two in. So hopefully it goes okay. Is there anything else we want to say on one shots? I feel like we covered pretty much everything that I could think of. I thought you were going to say I've covered everything and I'm sure there's a whole lot of things that we did not think of, but. Oh, I'm sure there is because <laughs> we were coming up with ideas like halfway through this, the, the podcast, the episode that we hadn't even thought of when we started. So there's definitely more out there that we're missing. Right. Uh, so I guess listeners, this is your cue. If there's anything we missed, leave a comment either on the video or the podcast episode. Uh, or hop over to our Discord server and let us know there, and then we'll either answer them uh, in response, or maybe we'll have to do another episode like this. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, whether it's on one shots or anything else, if you want to throw a question out there, maybe it will be answered in future podcasts. And if you are interested in other topics... Uh, not necessarily just one shots, but if there's another topic that you would like us to do kind of a deep dive on and chat about, uh, feel free to add that as well. And then we can do another episode on it and uh, we'll have more information for you. Maybe if there's enough questions, we can just do a answering questions podcast. There we go. That could work. In the meantime, I will be working on my Mad Libs. <laughs> All right. I guess he'll probably be testing those on me. So I'll let you know how it goes. All right, listeners, thank you for listening, and thank you, Ashley, for joining me this week. Yeah, no problem. See you next time. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Dungeon Master's Toolkit Podcast. You can find links to all of the products and resources that we talked about on the show in the show notes. And if you'd like to join the community or find out how to be on the show, check out our subreddit or join us in our Discord server.